Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I cannot wait to show you this week's transformation. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. This week's project was a doozy. I picked up this big, beautiful beauty at the local Goodwill. She was a steal at only $25. It's a solid wood dresser along with a beautiful mirror. Other than her exterior condition, she was in perfect shape. Let's get out the Dixie Belle mud. After a quick clean and a vacuum inside and out, I came in with a little plastic spatula. I applied my Dixie Belle mud to pretty much the entire piece. <laughs> this piece had so many damages, but that's okay. I know that once all of this little veneer spots are filled in, I can sand them back to flat and she will be as good as new. Even though this was a challenge and I considered taking off a lot of the veneer entirely, this was actually a little bit easier. The veneer was adhered in a lot of places, it was just a few small spots. So using my mud to repair this damage was easy to do. And sanding it back to flat when it's finished was a little bit messy, but once it's done, it's done. I knew that this piece was a bit of a bleeder since when I cleaned her, the paper towels kept coming back with a little bit of tannins on them. I got out my Dixie Belle Boss and a little roller, and this is the Boss in white, and I applied it to the entire piece. Now, mind you, I skipped the top and I skipped the feet because I have plans to stain those at one point during this video. Of course, there was a couple small spots that needed to be repaired a little bit further after my Boss, so I did that and she was ready to go. What's the plan for this piece? Well, we're going to do blue. I actually started painting this piece on a live on the Dixie Belle paint page. I also saved that video to my Facebook page if you guys wanted an in-depth tutorial about how to choose your colors from a transfer because that's how I picked these three beautiful blues was from the new Bohemian Wedding Transfer. If you want to check that out, go for it. It's on my Facebook page. Everything is at the top drawer RVA. So keeping a separate brush for each color, I came in first with my antebellum blue. I applied the antebellum blue around the edges of the dresser, making sure to get into the corners and the edges where the drawers would sit closed. Once I painted those edges, I did close the drawers. So when I do my ombre blending, it's going to stay cohesive across the entire piece. So this is just plain old antebellum blue going in around the edges, making sure to have those edges covered when the drawers are in. After I'm done with the antebellum blue, I'm going to come into the middle and apply my haint blue. That is my lightest blue color, which eventually will be ombre blended into Savannah Mist. So since this piece was prepped in boss, I've got a nice clean base for my paint to stick on. You'll find that when you use boss as a primer, not only does it block your tannins and bleed through, it gives you a nice light base for your paint to stick to. So this color right here that I'm applying, the haint blue, was probably the thickest out of the three. Because it's lighter, it's going to take a couple more coats than the darker colors. So after I get these three colors down onto the piece, I'll just keep them wet with my spray misting bottle and use my best dang brush to blend it together. Now I'm adding that third color, the Savannah Mist. If you notice when I do my ombre blending, if you pick three colors that are really close together on the color wheel, this makes your job super duper easy. So the Antebellum Blue, Haint Blue, and Savannah Mist all will be blended seamlessly with that Best Dang brush.
Okay, so now that all my white boss is covered, I'm gonna grab that Best Dang brush and I'm gonna keep it damp, wiping it off on a towel when too much product sticks inside the bristles. And I'm going to ombre blend in a smooth, cloudy motion. So you're gonna see my fingers hold the brush closer to the bristles and I'm gonna hold that brush fairly lightly, okay? So what's gonna happen is that small circular motion is gonna give that really pretty cloudy blend. Remember the amount of repair work that we did on this little piece? This is gonna disguise some of that piece with the texture, hiding the veneer issues that might be underneath. So it's gonna give you a texturized finish, not a very smooth finish, if that makes sense. This is where you're gonna get those arm muscles working hard. It's not the easiest job to do such a big surface, but this is the easiest way to get that really pretty cloudy blend that I tend to favor. So you're just gonna continue the process until you get the color pattern that you like. I made sure to come back in and look at this piece, make sure that the paint blue was blended out enough because I find that if the center is too stark when you add the transfer you're going to see too much of a contrast. So there you go. I know that was a long clip, but I think it's important for you all to see the entire process, kind of like a start to finish deal, because that way you're not missing any of the steps. You're gonna see exactly how I blend it, exactly how I do it, and then this way you can replicate the look on your own if you try. And here is the thing that I based the entire color palette off of. This is the brand new Bohemian Wedding Transfer from the Bells and Whistles line at Dixie Bell. All right, so let's learn everything that there is to know about transfers. Transfers arrive in that tube that you saw me show. Inside this transfer tube, there are four individual sheets, as well as an instruction sheet and a small wooden tool that you will use to burnish your transfer down onto the piece. So right now I am just preparing my transfer. I'm getting my tape ready to help me hold the sheets up. So the plan for this piece is to use these bigger sheets on the entire center. That is why I have the tape. 
I don't want my backing sheet to slip off my transfer, if that makes sense. They're fragile little creatures, and if that backing sheet slips off and your transfer touches down because of the sticky back, you could be in for a unwanted surprise having it stick where you don't want it to. So grab your painter's tape and get it ready and tape it up exactly where you want it to go. So the two image sheets that you're going to see me put on the piece now actually combine together to make one very large image. Don't be afraid of attaching a large image to your piece. Like I said, get out your painter's tape and plan it well. This way I'm not going to have any mistakes happen while I'm burnishing my transfer down onto my paint. And just so you know, transfers like to have very dry paint. This paint actually sat for about 36 hours before I came in and applied my transfer over top. Transfers also do not like to stick to wax. So do not wax your piece before you put your transfer on. You can clear coat, but you cannot wax. Right now, I'm just applying this onto bare naked chalk mineral paint from Dixie Bell. I find it super duper handy to have that tape be my extra fingers and holding the image so it doesn't slip or grab onto where it's not supposed to. I'm going to go over all of the edges. You're going to see me work from left to right, up and down. I kind of like to make sure that all of my edges are adhered and then pick a corner and start to peel my transfer down using that small wooden stick to burnish it down onto the piece. You can also see where this sticks to the drawer. There's two drawers in one spot where the transfer goes over top. That's okay. Keep those drawers pushed in, get that entire image on, and then use a sharp knife to cut your transfer. So I'm speeding up the process a little bit here, so I'm not going to bore you to death watching me burnish my transfer onto my dresser. This does take a little bit of time, y'all, but guess what? It's worth it. Once this image is on here, it looks like a million bucks. If you have to stop and take a break because your arms are tired, or you have to lay your dresser down flat on its back so that you make sure your transfer doesn't move, you do you. You gotta figure out how this process is gonna work best for, for your job. So once I get this one image down onto the piece, I'm going to very gently line up the second image so that I don't have an overlap of the images and that I can make sure that it's even Steven right on the front of the dresser. You might find as you move along that that paper that you're pulling the transfer off of gets a little bit long. You can totally cut that with scissors if it's easier for you to handle. You do not want it like folding over flat and then scooping it under where your actual transfer is adhering because you could make a mistake. I'm leaving this film right now in real time so that you can see how long it actually does take me. This is kind of like the tedious part about transfers, lining it up perfectly and then pushing it down onto your furniture. You can see me get all of my tape ready. It's going to be my extra fingers and I'm just going to gently make sure that all of the flowers line up properly. You can slightly, slightly overlay it just to make sure that it's touching, but make sure it matches on the top and the bottom and then smooth it out with your hand. Also be sure when you're putting your tape down to hold your image sheet that you're not putting your tape down on your freshly adhered transfer on the other side. Okay, that's my handy dandy tip of the day. You know I throw one of these handy dandy tips in every time. Because if you put a piece of tape on top of the transfer that you've already adhered to your dresser, you take the chance of it actually ripping off the image and then you're gonna be really sad and cry. <laughs> so don't do that. Be careful, mind you where you put your tape when you're taping up your image.
So when you do finish adhering your entire transfer to your dresser or your project, you're gonna to wanna to seal it. There's a couple of ways that you can seal your transfers on your piece. You can use Dixie Belle's clear coat, you can use Dixie Belle's wax, you can even use the Terraline wax. It's up to you what you choose to seal that transfer down onto your piece, but I sealed the entire base of this project in Dixie Belle's clear wax. I actually ended up going back over top of my image with my Terra Wax, which is an oil base, just to make sure that I had a really great tough seal on top of that transfer. So when you're applying a transfer around a drawer, you can see here that I am kind of scoring my sheet and then drawing the line in with the chalk marker. What this is gonna let me do is cut my image because if I taped down a spot where my transfer could stick to, like if I put blue tape around that edge so my transfer won't stick there, I would lose that image. I wanna keep all those little bits and pieces. So by cutting it exactly where it needs to go, the little bits and pieces that I'm keeping are like extra insurance. If I need them to fix up a boo-boo or if I wanted to fill in some space, I'd like to keep all the parts of my transfer. So I continued adding all of these little blooms around every single corner, making sure that I bent it in with my finger around the edges. You can see me really push down that transfer to get it adhered to the piece. You can also notice on this Bohemian transfer that there is those little, little beaded pieces that hang down. Can you see them? They're red, they're blue, they hang down off the flowers. I personally think they should hang downwards like that, but if you didn't like them because you were putting it sideways or the opposite way, you could always cut them off and adhere them to exactly where you want them to go. That's the magic thing about transfers is that you can cut them up and make them your own. You don't have to put them on the same way as everybody else and you don't have to put them on the same way every time. It's totally up to you when you're designing your own piece. All right, let's talk the top of this dresser. So if you notice something about that Bohemian transfer, you saw that there was tiny little wood branches. I know it's a little detail, but to me that tells me that the tops and the feet of this dresser should be brown as well. So I ended up choosing espresso gel stain for the top and the front two feet of this piece. I sanded back that Dixie Belle mud to flat on any of the veneer issues and gave this piece a slight stand so that I know it's nice and flat. I then wiped it with a damp cloth and got it ready for the stain. You can see on the top of this dresser, there's some marks, some kind of dark stains. Knowing that I wanted to use gel stain, which sits on top of the surface, I chose to pick a darker shade of brown than the stain. If you see the stain and then you see the actual gel stain that I'm using, the contrast is very similar. So I know that when I apply my gel stain over top of those water damage marks on the top, those dark stains that you're seeing, it's going to disappear. You can use one coat, two coats, three coats, as dark as you like to cover all of the damages with gel stain. For this project, I just used one even coat of gel stain over top of the entire wood top. I also use the same gel stain for the front two feet of this project. This is really going to draw your eye from the base to the middle and then to the top. It's all going to join together really well. So after I finished staining the top and the feet, I felt like the top drawer still looked like a little bit naked. It just needed a little bit more fancy pants to make it kind of blend in with the floral base. So I got out my antebellum blue and then I also took the painter's tape and I just taped off some sections and stripes and added antebellum blue to that top drawer on the inset part. 
Now it's time to add a little bit more wow factor. Using my gold mousse cut with a little bit of my gloss clear coat, I applied that to the entire Would You Bend molding. So this Would You Bend molding fits perfectly on that top drawer. After my mousse had dried, which was fairly quickly since I cut it with a bit of that gloss clear coat, I applied my glue to the backing after it was heated up and stuck it right on the front. It looks gorgeous. I continued the same process that I put on the front with my three colors of blue paint. The Haint Blue, Savannah Mist, and Antebellum Blue all ombre blended together. I did that on both sides of the dresser. And I actually painted the back of this piece as well, just because it's probably going to go into my booth space at a local shop, so it will look finished all the way around. Still waiting on that top to dry. Your gel stain can take a little while to get dry, anywhere from 12 to 24 to 48 hours, depending on where you are located. For me, it takes about 24 hours for my gel stain to dry inside my home. I wanted to darken up my corners just a little bit more, so I added some black wax to the Would You Bend molding and also around all the corners of the drawers and around the top edge. Since my Dixie Belle wax is a water-based wax, I can apply it and wipe it back super duper easy. I like using wax to age and distress my pieces. It just gives all of the details a little bit more of a pop. There's something about using wax around the corners just to provide that depth. I also think that adds a little bit more of an, an age to your project. And remember, this piece was not in the best shape. So even though she's a vintage old girl, she just wanted a little bit more age around her corners. And then that way she will look matched and authentic to her true self. So I like to use a damp sponge when I apply my gator hide. Um, I damp my sponge a little bit. This way it's just going to stay a bit more movable. I also like to overlap my strokes. So what you'll see me do is kind of come in around all of the edges, making sure to kind of tuck that sponge up under the corners and then keep going along with my gator hide to seal the entire top. You can add as many coats of gator hide as you like. You can even sand in between to make sure that your coats of gator hide are nice and smooth. After I finished that, I still had that mirror, <laughs> still had the mirror to do. So I painted the mirror in an ombre fashion as well, cleaned it with a little Windex and then put it back on the piece. A touch of gold gilding wax to all of the edges and she's done. What do you think? She is a true bohemian beauty. The colors that I chose from that beautiful bohemian wedding transfer are perfect together. Touched with gold and I put all the original hardware back on the piece. She is ready for her next 100 years. Thank you for joining me on my painting journey. I'll see you again next week.